sure bet coffee. Put the giddy up in your cup. You're watching Pass the Wire TV. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Cyberknife was a very talented horse from day one. Fast horse, able to carry it around two turns. Looks a tremendous amount. Light gun runner, same ability and talent. Holds the track record in the high school. He won it in impressive fashion, beating a very good group of horses. This thing is Cyberknife! Excited about him passing on his durability, his soundness, and his talent. He could definitely be a breed shaping stallion. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. Um, another week here. Um, we got another week to go before the Belmont. Um, so it looks like it's going to be a really nice field. Um, excuse me. It's going to be a really nice field there. Uh, looks like we're going to have a lot of runners from the Derby, a lot of runners from the Preakness. Um, so usually it shapes up to one or two horses from each race meeting up there but it looks like we're going to have at least uh probably an eight to a nine horse field so that's really nice um with the preakness winner uh sees the gray going to be in there and then you have uh sounds like mystic dan might uh, make it in there and sierra leone and a couple others that were really tough to uh play against in both races so we'll see how that goes uh, last week, um, we uh, did Santa Anita, the uh, Golden State Series. Uh, there was five races, five stakes races. And my top picks of all five races uh, won. Um, some didn't pay so well. Some paid okay. But overall, it was a chalk day. But we kind of knew that going into it. So uh, a winner is a winner. Um, unfortunately, it was uh, chalk but uh, we're going to try to get a little bit better um, prices whenever we can. Um, we got, we're going to be at uh, Churchill Downs uh, this weekend on uh, Saturday. They have a, what they call the Derby City Pick 6. You know, all six races are stakes races, but we'll cover the last two, uh, the Blame Stakes, um, Undubon uh, Stakes, uh, so we'll cover each one of those and we'll get right into it before we get into it um, i want to thank race lens uh for presenting this uh the show and then if you have any questions about anything from uh, a trainer's point of view an owner's point of view or anything in between please send me an email at charlespassthewire.com and i'll uh, get those answered as quickly as possible and then we'll uh, check it all out okay the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check in here on the 10th race which is the blame stakes and it's going a mile and an eighth this is on dirt for four-year-olds and up so we got some win uh, some horses that have uh, been hitting the uh, that hit probably was on the Derby Trail last year and was still hanging around picking up some stakes wins or money uh, this year. So the first horse, the number one horse, is uh, Frosted Departure. Um, on here, this horse has uh, got a little bit of early speed, as you can see down here. Uh, went wire to wire the last two times. Uh, last time was in a $200,000 stakes. Kenny McPeak is your trainer, which is the Derby winning trainer. Um, we have Julian Leperu uh, on board. He's rode this horse the last two times um, and won both times. So it looks like he's uh, knows this horse very well. Uh, last time was on a muddy track. Now this is going to be a muddy track on Saturday here at Churchill. That's a good question. We're supposed to get rain at Churchill on Friday. 
and a little bit possibly on Saturday. But right now, it looks like, if anything, it's going to be early morning Saturday. That track dries up very quick, people. So pay attention throughout all the races, how the pl- the track's playing. Right now, I'm going to play that it's going to be a fat, uh, fast track overall. And we'll just go from there. But this horse has won on a muddy track and a fast track. So you have to look at that. The number two, Highland Falls. This horse is another this horse comes from behind the last two times. Close okay. I mean, it's pretty much right there. Um, in a grade one and a grade two. This is a grade three. So this horse is dropping in class today. Um uh, Brad Cox is your trainer. Uh, this he has been hot of late. Well, he's a pretty much always hot. Let's we'll just face the facts there. Uh, the last thirty days, he's got a twenty five percent in the win column. When he takes a horse to a stakes race, he's got he wins at twenty three percent. That's pretty doggone good, if you ask me. And when a horse is off from one to two months, he gets a twenty seven percent. That's excellent. That's what this horse falls into. And this horse will be flying at the end. Will he get there? Mm, maybe. I think this horse has got an excellent shot. I think you should really look at this horse for the win column, especially the win in place. Uh, last couple of workouts has been really nice on the board, nice spread out on dates. I really don't look at times as much as I do as dates like he he worked out on the 17th of may and then he came back on the 25th of may that's very very good nice and tight in between races the number three this horse is a this horse is kind of a pressure horse as you can see it's early running running style you can sit right there second this one he ran second all the way through the last race. And um, Tyler Gaffleon was aboard. He's on board. He's aboard again. Time before that, he sent fifth, fourth, second, second. Hung a little bit, it looks like to me. Uh, in a, Both in grade threes. The uh, He's both at a mile. Well, one is at a mile and an eighth, so there's a good indication. But Tyler wrote him last time out. At a mile and 16th. And this horse will be sitting probably in the best spot, what they call the catbird seat, which is usually about third or fourth. Sits really close to the pace horses and usually makes one big move. And Race Lens has a, uh, we have race angles. And for this horse, The race angle on this one is third race uh, after a layoff, looking for improvement. Success score is a 4.3 and ROI of negative 28%. So that's really good. I really do love this angle when they, the the third one after a break. So this is really nice for this horse. I think this horse is a player. I think you're going to have to really look at this horse in the win and place column. So look out. The four, Uncle Jake. This horse is another one of those speed horses. He's a uh, early pace. We have uh, last time out, he was, you know, third, third, third. So he ran even last time. But every time before that, usually tries to take the lead. Uh, this horse will probably one of them on the lead. We'll go to our our, our chart in a second that race lens uh provides for us on where they think they're going to place in during the race. Um, the Lasix come off this horse. Uh, when it did run off the of Lasix one time, the, the last time it did run off the of Lasix, didn't run well at all. Kind of scary, but it was in a grade two. Don't know if he was overhead. I'm going to say I think this horse is a notch below these others, and I would probably look elsewhere for this horse to land in another race that's a little bit easier for it. Tap it trice. Well, we haven't seen this horse since August of 23 at Saratoga. You know, this horse was on the uh, Kentucky Derby, ran in the Derby, finished seventh, 
Well, I think it was it was the co favorite, or no, I think it was second favorite, uh, four to five, four to four to one. So they liked that horse in the Derby. Then he went to the Belmont, just came up just a little bit short. I think he hung right there at the end, if I remember correctly. But uh, and then the time before, after that, in the Haskell, pretty much ran even. And the time after that, the Travers, uh, same thing, ran even. And then they gave him a nice long break. Todd Pletcher, when he gives them six months or more off and comes back, he wins at 19%. That's uh, pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, the workouts, really nice and tight. Uh, May 25th was the last one, 17th before that, and then May 10th before that. You know, you want them seven to eight to nine days together, depending on the weather, of course. A lot of trainers do not like to work a horse in the mud. Uh, they don't mind jogging them or galloping them in the mud, but working them is a different story. So sometimes you'll see a little bit more of a gap, but that's usually because of weather. Uh, but on this horse, this horse has got all the back class. You have to respect this horse a little bit. Um, is it enough to say that you should uh, the, for the win column? I don't know. I think he's going to need one. Uh, this horse says, here's the angle here. The horse uh, shipping into a track wins on multiple circuits. So this horse is uh, definitely could win anywhere. It looks like success score is a 4.7. The ROI is a uh, negative 30% on that. So for me, I think this is more of an exotic play for this horse. This horse might be the favorite. Uh, a lot of people love this horse from the Derby Trail back in the day. And you got Todd Pletcher and Pratt, Pratt uh, riding the horse. So look out. Number six, Dreamlike. So this horse, last time out, ran second, lost by a neck um, in a lounge race. Before that, it ran in a grade one. Didn't uh, do too good, but did run behind White Abario. And in the classic, at uh, the Breed, uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic. So, so before that, the Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Derby before the Breeders' Cup finished second by uh, half a length, did very well. So this horse has got a lot of talent. And you must respect this horse. There is a race lens angle here. Let's see what it is. The first one is Todd Pletcher, last race beaten favorite. Success score of the six point seven. That's Excellent, but there is a negative one to him. Uh, run style of sustain or of stain pressure, uh, pressure type of horse, which I do believe he is. He'll sit there in the pocket. Uh, is not supposedly that good for this type of race. Um, I see this horse sitting right there, probably another one that has a chance to sit in the catbird seat. Will he have a chance to win? Maybe. But I do believe personally more on the exotic sides uh, for the third and fourth spot. Uh, but definitely not out of out of shot of trying to win this race. The seven, classic causeway. This horse um, last time ran pretty even, fourth pretty much all the way around. Hernandez was bored. Uh, time before that, tried to jump out to very lead, gave out. Same thing, early lead before that one. So this is another horse that looks like it's going to go to the front end or has a chance to go on the front end. The question is, can he hang on? Uh, big price there. I personally don't see him hanging on because there's plenty of speed in here. If he was a lone speed, maybe he could hang on. But right now, I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say that, at best, the bottom of all your exotics. Eight, Last Samurai. Uh, this horse, the last two times, really didn't put it together. It's been beaten by over 24, uh, 24 lengths in the last two races. Going the wrong direction, if you're asking me. Uh, race lens angle here. Third race off for layoff, looking for improvement. Uh, horse shipping back to a track wins on multiple circuit. 
the horse is going to have to wake up to compete against these horses. The horse does have show, has shown talent in the past to keep up. The question is, is he on a down cycle or can he uh, swing out of that? I don't know, but I, right today, I'm going to say no, that he could compete against these horses. Craig, Alos Craig Alosto, Craig Alosto, uh, that's a hard one to pronounce, people. Uh, Sherry DeVoe, Sherry DeVoe, excuse me, is the trainer. And last time this horse went almost wire to wire. Horse has got some, some speed, but I think this is more of a pressure horse. Would this horse have uh, enough speed to go out in front? No, I think this one's going to have to sit off him. Another one that has a chance of uh, doing that catbird seat. But, uh, you know, moving up here when it was in grade threes three times in a row, has well, has finished third and second before. So I think this horse is more for the minor awards. Jose's aboard for uh, – Sheree DeVoe, and with, when they have hooked up together with the jockey, they have won 32%. So check out that. And we got a race lens angle. It's negative. The running style says it's a, it's not good for this type of race. It hasn't won that often. But there's plenty of speed in here. If you're a pressure horse, I think you still got a, a shot at it. And yeah, Lasix are off, but this horse has had Lasix off before and finished second and third in grade threes before. So definitely a shot, definitely for minor awards, but for me, not in the top two spots. Five-star general. And uh, Foster Grant is the uh, trainer. Last time this horse went wire to wire. Um, almost every time this horse runs, he pops the gate pretty good. Another one with some early speed. See what I'm saying? We have now, this is part of the fourth horse with early speed, uh, plenty of early speed. That's why I think it's a little bit more for setting up for a come from behind her, uh, that will be flying at the end. This horse is off Lasix, but ran third off Lasix before, so I don't think that's a problem. Uh, a race lens angle here, form round, never far back, one to seven days ago. So ran on May the 27th. So there you have it. Coming back at a pretty short time, that's okay. Um, that's totally fine to do. Uh, the 11, trademark. Yeah, it hasn't shown much in the last couple of races. Uh, been beaten well over, well, geez, over 40 lengths. So um, in the last two times, the horse really is, needs something. They're not adding blinkers or nothing. They're not, I don't know what, last time was on sloppy track, so we could probably excuse that last time. Time for that, though, 26 lengths behind National Treasure in the Pegasus uh, World Cup. Uh, I don't know. The horse does have some back class. Is it on a down cycle? Maybe so. Uh, negative angle here. Perform a second start after a layoff. Out of the money in the last start. Yep. And only 8 to 30 days away. So it's saying that's a bad angle. And I actually probably would have to agree with it because that's a that was not a very good coming out of, um, you know, from a nice long layoff from January to May, that he didn't do very well in changing jockeys here. Uh, Martin Garcia is uh, aboard today. So it's not for my money on this horse. Um, so there's the blame stakes in a nutshell. I do like the two a little bit there and the three. And uh, we'll go and check out what the pace chart says here uh, from race lens and here we go all right they're saying the two has a 17 percent chance six has a 17 percent chance the three has a 
pretty much a 14% chance. Five. So they're saying it's pretty wide open. And if you see the early spot right here, it says early. They're showing the 3, 5, 10, 11, all out in the front. I mean, that's that's pretty tight. And the 2 sitting right behind them and the 4 right behind them. So 2 and the 4 are in the catbird seat according to their calculations. Over here, uh, what's, what's good on the odds? What's... Uh, True adjusted odds, Fro uh, frosted uh, departure, morning line is 15. Uh, this true odds should be 13 to 1, which is not too bad. But here's a big one here. Uncle Jake, morning line is 30 to 1, and they're saying the true odds should be 11 to 1. So that might be some value, especially you toss that um, this horse on the uh, exotics underneath. There's, they're saying this horse has a shot for fourth, but look at these percentages. They're very tight. So you're looking at 8% compared to everything else. Um, and then, of course, the last one, Five Star General, supposed to be a 30 to 1 and a 16 to 1 true odds. I personally like in this race the two. I think the two is going to be very tough to beat. Uh, this one's going to be closing. And then the three is my second choice in this race uh it should be another one that should be in the pace uh the should be sitting up there closer to it yeah they have it for uh basically first coming around the middle of the race they're saying two three five so they're saying the two is going to take over basically coming around the turn for home they're going to say that the two is going to be starting to take over i i see it taking over a little bit later than that but this is how they're projecting it, and, um, you know, it's another tool to look at. And when you get race lens, make sure if you want to look at true odds, it, they adjust throughout the day, you know, especially if there's a scratch in this race, they will adjust. And during the race, well, you know, people are betting constantly. It will constantly adjust and let you know what's true odds for that horse. All right. So we're going to go to uh, the race 11, and we will uh, set this up here. And here we go. And we go to race 11. We're just doing race 10 there, but okay. Number one, Nomos. Horse has got decent... Uh, Speed, it looks like. They say early to pressure to basically pace horse. It looks like this horse likes to be sitting up close. Last time it won with Ortiz. I read Ortiz. I read's back. Todd Pletcher combo. You know, that's always a good combo. And this horse has definitely got a shot at this race. And this race is, I want to, I forgot to show you that. It's a stakes race, a mile and an eighth on turf for three year olds on the turf so all right so anyway uh this horse does have a race lens let's see what it is it's probably a negative one yeah turf route almost to the post position one not very successful so basically they're saying the one post is not very good but you know what if you're a good horse you uh, doesn't matter what post you're in people but um it doesn't really help that he's got a little, at least he's got a little speed to he, he get out of trouble. But uh, we'll see how that works out for this horse when the gates open. The two. Kanji, Kuji, Kajino, Kajino, Kajino. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, this horse. Last, uh, last two times have been in graded three and grade two. Last time out, ran okay, ran fourth. Uh, going a mile and 16th on turf. Looks like it was closing a little bit. This is another horse that likes to sit very close on the pace. Flavian Pratt is aboard. They're changing jockeys here. Um, Suge, Suge is the trainer. A lot of good things about this horse. I think this horse could be sitting in a nice spot. 
You got to look out for this horse on the top two spots. This horse was ran to horses like Neat. I mean, Neat was no pushover uh, not that long ago. So at uh, Keeneland, she won the Transylvania uh, Stakes there. So look out for the two. Cameo Performance, the number three horse. So we had two races, very lightly raised three-year-old here. Out of Oscar performance, uh, sire, he's becoming a great sire for turf horses. So always keep that in mind when you look at turf horses. Uh, Lasix are off. Horse ran second in Ireland without Lasix. So not too concerned about the Lasix off part. Uh, Brendan Walsh is, has this invader. He came out and won a maiden race. Looked really good. Stepping up in class. Does he have a shot? Maybe. I think this horse has got some got some talent here. This horse is, could sit right off the pace. Another one that could sit off the pace and see who could do whatever. Uh, horse won last race as a favorite. So coming out of a fit, one even money, so he uh, paid off all his backers. So this horse has definitely got a, a talent. Got to look for this horse uh, definitely at the end. Tyler Gaffleon in the irons. Thomas Aquintus. Uh, this horse probably got a little bit more speed than is actually showing. He sits there second, but so close. Probably doesn't want the lead, but we have to look at the rest of this race and see how the speed goes. He might be the speed. Who knows? We'll look at the rest of the race and figure that out. But this horse definitely has got the speed to keep up with that leader. And uh, the horse is probably another pace horse, but he needs to be very super close to do any damage. So you have to have uh, – Brian Hernandez is going to have to put this horse right in the thick of things from the beginning to have a shot in this race. For me, I think it's more exotics than anything. The five, formidable man. This horse is definitely one of your speed horses. Runs out in front, decent speed, average speed here. There's some decent speed. So this horse looks like a front runner to me. Um, will it be running out loose? Who knows? Luis Saez is bored. Uh, he's excellent with speed horses. He really is an excellent jockey, period, overall. Um, I think he's a, he's a underrated jockey. I mean, I think he's excellent. So this does this horse have a shot? I don't know. I think it's more of the exotics than anything. Uh, we'll have to check out the rest of the race. Camaro Z. I had a, a Z28, Camaro Z28 back in the day, IROC. Uh, we're talking back in the late 80s. But, hey, uh, this horse is a, uh, another pace horse. Sits really close to the pace. A lot of those in this race so far. So you're going to – whoever's going to get the lead, These there's plenty of horses to push that horse along. Um, this horse is uh, from dirt to turf. The trainer gets 11% win. That's pretty good. When he goes the distance, this distance on the turf, on the surface, which is any surface, but it's the same surface, this work, this trainer gets a plus 110% ROI return on your investment. That's excellent. So he knows what he's doing when he puts them at these type of distances on the grass. Jose Ortiz is aboard. Does he have a shot? Well, he's a pressure horse. He definitely has a shot. Try more or less for some of the exotics. The seven. Rock and roll, rockin' a halo. Well, rockin' a halo. So uh, uh, this horse, last time out, this horse is more of a closer, big time closer. Comes from the clouds a little bit last time. Probably in this race, he's going to have to sit a little closer to do a little damage. Uh, what's his race angle say here? Running style is not, basically not up to par for this. Up to five or more points in a class rating. Success score is only a 2.0. Not good. 
for me, it's not for me in this race. I just think this horse is going to have to do a lot of work to even keep up. The eight twirling point. This horse is, uh, this is another one that's a pace horse. So this one had to, can do some damage. Uh, did close pretty good last time. Uh, Franca De Tori is uh, aboard again. Did very good with this horse last time out in a small stakes race. So the, this trainer, when he puts him in stakes race, he gets 24% wins. But look at it when he does uh, synthetic to turf, his ROI is a plus 42% unbelievable that's excellent so uh jonathan thomas as a trainer very good he's got he had last 30 days 26 percent in the win column plus nine percent in roi what more can you ask for right of course does he have a sh shot yeah definitely has a shot but for me i still think there's others a little bit better the nine Lagunas, Steve Ashmerson, trainer, Christian Torres, the writer, wrote, wrote him last two times, finished third both times. Uh, on the turf, looks like it was closing. This is more of a pressure type of closer. This horse is going to be sitting pretty close, another pressure horser. I mean, a lot of pressure. So the whoever the front runner is going to be, they're not going to have an easy time. They will not. There's plenty of speed in here. Uh, let's look at this jockey. Last uh, 30 days, 20% wins, plus 19% ROI. Last 10 days, 50% wins. And he ran, well, 18, 18 starts. And so he's won nine, nine of them. Uh, look at his ROI, plus 204. So basically he's getting some nice odds on everything. So this... He's bringing in some price horses, not just favorites. Does a great job. He is an excellent rider. Does this horse have a shot? Definitely. Does he have a shot in the top two? Definitely. I think this is one of your major players in this race. So look out for this horse. The 10. Can Group. Uh, Mark Casey's the trainer. Last two times. Actually, last three times. Hasn't really shown much. The horse is going to have to really pick it up a lot to do some damage here. This horse is a closer, which in this race might help this horse. Race Lynn's angle here is the third race after a layoff, which is one of my favorite. So looking for improvement. Success score is a 4.3. So does this horse have a shot? Yeah, but this horse has really got a lot of work to do. And... Um, it will be flying at the end, but I don't see this horse doing much damage other than for exotics. So, so that was that uh, the eleventh race here, and what we'll do now is we're going to go and look at Race Lynn's chart and see how they see how the race is going to unfold. Like I like I told you, there's plenty of pace horses, which means somebody's got to go take the lead all right here we are they're saying and the early going is the five the five is formidable man is going to take the lead look how they have the two three six sitting very close which i do believe is uh, definitely especially the two but there's all those should have been I personally think all these horses back here will be even closer. Uh, halfway or a little bit more than halfway, they see in the five and the two are going to really lock up to each other. Possibly that is a good shot on that. And they're going to say at the end, the winner is going to be the five at 17%. The two is 16%. The nine at 16% has a chance to win. So, they're saying the top three spots are very wide open for these three horses, the 5, 2, 9. My personal opinion, uh, I really like the 9 in this race. Laganus, I think this, this race is setting up for this horse. But I have to admit, the 2 is going to be right there. 
So I do like the 9-2 a lot. I personally like the 3 and then the 1 after that. The 1's got a temp, a little over almost 11%, and the 10's got basically 10%. So this is how they see it. This is another great tool. Let's show what the odds, uh, true odds should be. On the 5, they're saying 9-2, to two, and the morning line's 5-1. to one. So there, that's... Uh, you know, some value there. But remember what I said about value last weekend, I hit all five races with my top pick. A couple of them paid three something. And then I think one or two of them paid six something. So they were all favorites though. What's a, what's a value bet oh, to me is a winning bet. So if you played them in a pick five or pick six or, did something like that, you could have probably cashed out a little bit more than you should have uh, when you pay them just to win. That's just the way it goes sometimes. A win is a win in my book. So that's how I see it on this race. So now we'll go and uh, see how I'm going to play this race. I personally think I'm going to play – now remember the Derby – Six is the uh, the pick six. It's a Derby City pick six. So this is how I see it. And uh, the Derby pick six, the Arlington Greatest Stakes is the first race, which is the sixth race where the pick six starts. I do like the 3162 in that race. Um, in my pick six, I'm going to go with my top three picks, the 316. The seventh race, I'm going to go with just my top pick, the three. Uh, the eighth race, I'm going to go with my top four picks, all four. I have a hard time with that one. Um, so there they are, 3785. And then. And the ninth, I'm going not just my top four, but I'm going to take the fifth one in there. Uh, one, seven, six, four, and five. The, the tenth, I'm going to go two, three, six, five. Remember, I like the two and the three a little bit more, but I have to admit the six and the five could do some damage. And you know what? With some prices, this, we got to do something. And then my last, the last race, the 11th race, I like the 9-2. I cannot make up my mind. I do think the 9 is going to have the best shot from where he's coming from behind. So that's how I see it. Uh, here's other plays in the 7th race. I'm just going to take uh, exacta straight the 3 on top of the 4, and I'm going to do $50 win on the 3. Remember, that is my single in the pick 6. Got to have a single. Are the pick six uh, tickets way too much? I think right now this ticket's 240 the way it is because I go three by one, by four, by five, by four, by two. So that's how I did it. Race eight, I'm going to do a trifecta with my top two picks on top. Of course, they go in the second and third spots too. I'm going to do the eight, five in the second and third spot, and then plus in the third spot. I will add that four for a little bit of a price to hit it coming in the last spot. Ninth race, same thing. Trifecta, the, my top two horses, one and the seven. I'm going to all you know all three spots, but then I'm adding the six and the four in the second spot. Same thing in the third spot, but I'm going to add the five also in that third spot. The tenth, the blame stakes we already went over. I'm going the two on top of the three and the six. I'm going to take a little bit of a shot that that two is going to win. But remember, on my pick six, I took the, the two, three, six, five. Because I got a couple of prices in there that could probably do some damage. And if they sneak in there, I got at least a couple of long shots, hopefully, from that race or then the race before I could get some long shots in there. And then the, the final race, the ninth, uh, the 11th race, excuse me, um, I got a $20 exacta box just between my top two horses, the nine and the, um, the two, and that's how I see it. 
All right. So there we have it. Um, that's what we have for today uh, for Churchill. So remember to check out the races. Make sure how the, the track's playing. Most likely we're going to get some rain for sure Friday. Don't know about Saturday much. And once again, I want to thank Race Lens uh, for, for sponsoring this show. And then we also want to do, um, remember, we're gonna, we are gonna have Jim that is out there at Saratoga giving us live shots, talking to trainers and jockeys, and giving us some inside scoop on everything that's going to happen at the Belmont. So we'll be ready for the Belmont. So let's go on out there and get some winners. And remember one thing, if you need any uh, answers to any questions, please uh, shoot me an email at Charles Pass the Wire. So let's go out there and let's get some winners. See ya. Nobody does it better. Nobody does it better.